What's going on button pushers? Let's talk music videos. So a lot of you guys want to shoot music videos and a lot of you guys don't know the ins and outs of it. So I wanted to give you guys my personal experience because I've had my fair share of indie music videos and there's a lot of issues and red flags that you guys need to look out for. So today I want to give you guys some advice from my personal experience to help you guys out so you guys don't have to deal with these problems. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment below. Let me know if you guys have run into any red flags that I don't talk about in this video or if you guys want to just speak out on any red flags to give advice to other viewers, just drop it in the comments below and let's just jump straight into the video. First, I want to talk about shooting with a permit. Now, of course, you don't need a permit to shoot everywhere. There are places where you do need permits and I advise you do get those permits if you need one because if you decide to go there, shoot, whether it's a park lot on a private property or something like a casino or even just like a hotel you can get kicked out for loitering it is illegal and you probably don't want to have to deal with that mainly because you go there you shoot some stuff and then you just have to scrap it and reschedule reshoot move locations it gets tedious and just avoid the headache get a permit if you have to or just shoot in a place where you don't need a permit really simple next let's talk about delivery time and pay time so there's a difference between the delivery time and the pay time because the delivery time is when you deliver the final product or whatever drafts you want to give them and the pay time is when they actually give you the rest or the full payment so a lot of people have different ways of payment so a lot of people will take a 50 percent deposit some people will take like no deposit or a smaller deposit and no matter what you actually do for a deposit or a payment time make sure that before you give a final delivery at all you get all your payment because if you don't you're opening up the scammable ways of you know people so you're giving them the opportunity to scam you walk away by paying just the down payment or no down payment at all depending on how you handled it what i like to do is i upload all my previews in a 720p which is a low 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 quality version up to streamable.com. This is not a paid promotion. They're not paying me to say this, but I just really love that website. Anyway, Streamable is really good because you aren't able to download the video from it. And if they were to like screen record and everything, it's already low quality. Streamable is a good way to go for previews and just don't send a final draft until they finish paying you. That way you can avoid scams and you just get all your money that you needed. So don't deliver anything until you've been paid, unless it's on contract. A lot of times artists are going to try to undersell you. You. There's a lot of times where people are just looking out for themselves. They really want to save that money, but make sure you stay firm with your price. You have your fees and you know how much you're worth. So charge that price and you get to decide who you give your discounts to. You don't have to give your discount to anybody or everybody just because of who they are as a person or who they are in general. If they're famous or not, you shouldn't have to undersell yourself. Don't worry about it. So back when I was charging $375 per video, I had a guy that tried to stoop me down to to 175 from an already discounted price of 250 Nah, I was not having that. There's been a lot of times where artists are like, yeah, I dabble in photography and videography. I know a bit about cameras. And you know, there's a lot of artists out there that actually do know their stuff. And a lot of artists that kind of feel like they know their stuff, but not actually. So uh, plenty of times I've had artists say, Ooh, can I get that red look? Can you, can I pay you and give you, give me that red look? Or, you know, they talk about red cameras left and right and all this stuff. But honestly, just know, whatever you're shooting on, make sure you're comfortable with it and you know how to work it. Because regardless of what the artist wants, if they want a red look, if they want, you know, to rent out a red camera at all or anything, just know, if you don't know how to use it, your shoot's gonna be terrible. Honestly, just focus on what you're comfortable with. If you can shoot, if you can still provide that super good quality, don't worry about it. Because I have a red Komodo, I still shoot videos on the 1DX3. Why? Because there are specific videos that do require autofocus, that do require lots of movement and stuff. And there are situations where I don't have a second person for a first AC and whatnot. So there are times where I do need to use the 1DX3 over the red because of different scenarios and different situations of the video itself. So don't worry about having to shoot the highest quality and stuff because if you're not comfortable with the camera you're using, the video is not gonna turn out good. So don't worry about it. 
the artist's knowledge is very limited because they sometimes they don't even know. They can't tell the difference. I've had people ask me, yo, is that camera red? And it was the 1DX3. Like a lot of them don't know. And sometimes you can't even tell the difference. Trust me, just do what you can. And lastly, let's talk about the budget and that versus fees and production costs. Everybody has their rates. Everybody has their fees. You maybe you charge 500, maybe you charge 750, maybe you charge a thousand, whatever that is. You have to mention, you got to clarify, you got to talk to the artist and make sure they know production cost is not included in that. Let's say they want to rent out a camera, they want to rent out a studio, they want to do a bunch of other stuff, they want to hire models. If you're doing all of this, you got to really signify with them and let them know this is extra and you have to pay for all of this. This is not in my fee. Some artists may be a little bit confused when you ask what's your budget, they give you a budget and you say that's the fee. Like you just flat out say that's how much I'm going to charge you. You got to know about the production costs, like what plays into their budget. So let's say they have a budget of 1500. You can't take that whole budget by yourself and do the fee unless your entire fee is 1500. You might as well not shoot the video if you need production costs. If you have a fee of $1,000 and they have a budget of $2,000, you got a $1,000 budget to spend on car rentals, gear rental, studio studio rental, models, all that stuff. So budget versus fee. So make sure you guys know the difference between that and clarify it with your artist because communication is key and if there's no communication between the two of you, it just gets really hard and it becomes a headache. Make sure you clarify that between the two of you. Anyways guys, that was five different tips for you guys to kind of pull out those red flags and kind of watch out for when you're getting into these indie music videos because I have done my fair share, have my experiences, my good and my bad experiences. I just wanted to share some with you guys so you didn't have to face the problems going in blind and having to deal with them one day. So you can prepare yourself for these situations and kind of know how to handle them when they happen. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Drop me that comment below. Let me know if you guys have any extra red flags that I didn't mention in this video for the viewers watching because I know a lot of you are out there have bad experiences just like me and I would love to hear about your bad experiences as I'm sure a lot of others would just to kind of watch out for. Thank you guys again. Have an amazing day, morning, night, wherever you're watching from. Keep pushing buttons and I'll see you next time. Peace.